Um, as Brittany said, uh, we are recording this, so just put all your questions in the chat section. Brittany will look at those because I'm sure there's going to be a few questions here and there. Um, and she is right. This is a very simple process. Um, even I can do this, so it's that simple. But we have all of our information available to you already on our web page. Uh, we're going to I'll show you where that is and I'll go kind of through this um, process. And Brittany, if you could open up the share thing for me real quick, we'll get this. Uh, there we go. Thank you. All right. So let's see here. It's loading at the moment. Um, we do have a manual out there. So if you do have any questions, you do you can fall back on that. Um, right here, we do have our web page that shows we've made an announcement on here that'll take you straight to that particular part uh, on for employee reimbursements. If uh, at any point in time you already have a bookmark, go to a particular area. It's going to be under the pay and purchase vouchers and requisition section of our web page. And this is where we're going to have well hit this right there and we'll have employee reimbursements. It has its own little section now. You can look through here. If you'll go to the general procurement link, hyperlink, that's where you can find our manual. That way, if you want to look at this while I'm going through it, you can open it up. And it's right here under employee reimbursement manual for SAP Concur. It's only seven pages long, very simple. Uh, for those of you that have already worked through Concur, with either your P card or travel expenses, this will be a very familiar thing for you. And let me show you here. So what we're going to do is, if you don't know how to get into Concur, um, just let us know. I can show you that. We're going to pretty much say that everyone does know how to get into Concur just because most everyone uses it at this point. And we'll just kind of jump into this particular area. So let's, I'm gonna go over to my Concur screen. Right. Does everyone see Concur now homepage? Okay. Move this over here. So when you're going into Concur, unlike your normal travel, you're um, going to uh, not do a request. So like PCARD, it automatically has a, for a folder for you. This one will not do that because this is not a normal, typical thing that we expect to see but you're going to bypass creating a request. So you're going to go straight to expenses. You can either add new right here for a start a new report. You can go up here to your expense tab, or you can select open reports, even if you have nothing there. So there's multiple options to get there. We're just going to start a new report. And the first thing it should be uh, is going to be your request or your report header. So all of your wonderful information that you get to key in saying what this particular purchase is about. The very first thing you're going to do, though, is normally right here under the policy, it'll say T&E, travel and expenses. We're going to change that to employee reimbursement. Once that's done, that lets the system know this is not travel related. This is not your P card. This is just for the employee reimbursement. So on your report name, right here, it, it tells you exactly what you're looking for. You're going to key in REIMB hyphen last name and then the month and year. So this is, well, I might help if I actually have that going right here. There we go. And then you're going to put in the purchase date. So if I made a purchase yesterday, and that's what the date we're going to put in here. Reimbursement justification. Uh, what is this particular purpose? Why? What is um, the reason for that particular purchase there? Just like you would on any other uh, P card report or travel report, we're wanting to know why is this purchase necessary? How is it for the university or for your particular department? And then, of course, it's going to ask, why was a P card not used? Because most of the time, we do want you to use the P card. If you can't use the P card, we do want you to use uh, purchase orders. 
to get these supplies in. We can keep better track of everything, make sure things uh, get to you in a timely manner, are paid for without it coming necessarily off of the P card if there's a limitation, if it's a large expense. Uh, we do know that on occasion, there are going to be those random exceptions, and that's what this is for, just like it has been uh, when you're putting in a purchase voucher for yourself from your vendors. Uh, we're going to change that because that's just repeating that. In some cases, some people don't have a P card. We understand that. Uh, the department might. Uh, it's easy to use the P card from the department. Uh, just need to get a hold of whoever it is in your department that actually does have it. Uh, it does want to know whether food was purchased. Uh, just because if it, food is purchased, just uh, like all your P card ones, we need to know why it was purchased. Uh, was it an event for students? Was it an event for faculty? Something along those lines. We just have to have the verification on the purpose of that one. After you've completed just this little bit, you're just going to leave this part at the bottom. It says travel allowance. We're, it's going to stay at no. That's the default. So we don't even have to do anything with that. And we're going to create the report. So this looks very familiar. Like I said, it's the same as your P card or your travel expenses. We're just going to add an expense. And just like in your P card, you're going to be picking the item and based off of the accounting code, what the what it was that you purchased. So in this case, we're going to pick something. Let's see, go down here. Just find something, earbuds, because we need that for, everyone needs those, especially when the students start coming in and we need to get work done and don't need to hear them. Because they keep asking the same questions and I'm not sure why. All right, so transaction date, as we said, 24th, the vendor name, I'm gonna key that in, amount, Description, this is where you'll put in your fund, org, and program for your FOAP, uh, depending on which department is paying for it or which FOAP you're using. You'll obviously add your receipt. You want to make sure that the receipt shows the vendor name, the date of purchase, the item purchase, the complete sale, total amount, anything like that. Uh, you're in the comments section. Uh, any additional notations, obviously we do want to know, again, uh, why was this particular purchase necessary? Why was it needed for the department or this particular user? Uh, remember, we do not reimburse for sales tax. The only time we will reimburse for sales tax is if it's a business meal, at which point we have to have the information as well on the business meal, which is who all attended, who they are affiliated with, and the nature and purpose of this particular business meal. We're going to go ahead and save this, even though it's not complete with all the folks and the receipt. You can't always attach the receipt if you don't have it right that moment when you're entering this in. It will give you alerts of anything that's missing, such as the receipt and the folk. Don't have those on there yet. And then once you're done with this, you'll be able to submit your report. It's going to go to your supervisor. It'll go to the financial manager, and then it will come to our office. So the normal process, just like for P card and your travel expenses, and it will get there a lot faster just because it's able to be submitted. And you're not having to wait for the all the other parts when going through AP as far as like your vendor, your purchaser and everything else. So it will expedite things. Once you get that, we will initiate uh, payment like we do with all accounts payable, like it would have been before. We initiate those once a week. If it's issued on Thursday, it can still take up to two business days before it is direct deposited into your account, depending on the financial institution that you use. At this time, does anyone have any questions? Okay, so that was pretty much it. Um, and since this is in Concur, you are able to always go back into Concur itself. Uh, you can check on 
the if you go to report details when you open this up, you can look at the report timeline and see where it is in that process of approvals. That way you're always aware of where it is, how much longer it could potentially take until you do get your money back on this. Again, this is in the event that you aren't able to use a P card or go through your purchaser using a PO. We do want to limit these uh, just because we prefer you using the P card uh, or the uh, PO, but it is here in for those exceptions. So if anyone has any questions, uh, I'd be more than happy to answer those. Let's see. All right, so when you are looking uh, on your report detail or your report header, pardon me, it does say fund, concur, or fund X, concur default. You cannot change your FOP in this header section. That's just letting the system know it's not assigned to a particular FOP. When you are actually entering in the information right here, you can hit the drop down arrows. You can key in the fund, the org, and the program. And you can search them up either by keying in the number if you know it, or if you can't remember the exact number, you can scroll through the list and see what all is available to see, oh, that's the one that I normally use. And then right here, if you happen to have multiple items on here, once you key in that first one and save it, it will remember it as a favorite. And that way it will show up and it'll have the entire text on there. So you can just select it and it will fill in all three of them. And hey, then, JC, just yeah. as a refresher, let's let's go to the profile and, see, and show them how to update their, their folk that way within the profile. Oh, you mean over here? Yep. So if you just go up here to your particular icon, you can look at your profile options. Go to request settings or expense settings. They will actually be the exact same. And you'll just do the first spot under each one, which is request information. And you can update this. Um, now doing this, what will happen is it will automatically default every transaction to whatever one folk that you put in there it automatically allocates it all to that. So if you wind up using multiple FOPs throughout the year for your travels, then you'll have to still go in there and allocate it to where it's not just that one FOP that's been changed here, but any additional FOPs that you want to use on it. Otherwise, everything will automatically go to that one FOP. Right. Good point. So um, there's actually a couple good questions. Um so um, well, let me ask these questions because I really think other people have the same question. So it's going to be helpful for other people to know. So would the header change if we are asking for reimbursement for food? So if you just want to do a little uh, back to your example, yeah. And then just change right here. port header. No change. The only difference is it's going to want whether it's it's just going to flag our system so we can when we're if we pull a report, we could separate it on what's going to be a purchase that might be food related or not. But if food was purchased, we do need a justification for the purchase of that food. So another question is if you're a delegate, um, obviously for members of your faculty, um, can you submit reimbursements for them as their delegate? So you can create the actual expense report for um, the individual faculty member, but you cannot submit on their behalf. So you would be able to create it, but not submit it. Um, so there's that. Um, as a delegate, can as a delegate, can you change the default account for people in within their department? Um, you can, as a delegate, you, mm, ah, honestly, that's a difficult one for me because unfortunately I see it from a, a different hierarchy aspect. Uh, you possibly can change uh, the profile settings 
for it to be uh, a constant one, like we just showed you. Um, but even if you can't do that, as a delegate, you can always come into the report itself and change this to any folk that you need it to be. But I'll look further into that to see if, as a delegate, you can change that particular profile. Any other questions? I think that's all of them in the chat. Um, okay. I'm going to stop the recording, if that's all right with everyone.